While most students are doing activities like this, some are doing activities like this. <laughs> there we go. Keep it going. Keep it going. Meet Roger. I am the executive director and the lead instructor for Tianvika Riding Academy. Roger supervises an organization which facilitates therapeutic horse riding for developmentally disabled clients. The movement of the horse mimics quite a bit the movement of the human body. So if we have a rider who oh, cannot walk we go. or has very limited motion in their legs, or when they start riding, their legs are so tight they're, they're really up high on the saddle. And by the end of a riding lesson, their legs will be dropping, almost, you know, hanging instead of being tight. Jeremy is one of the many young people with mental or physical disabilities who benefit from the soothing horse rides. My name is Jeremy. I'm 22 years old. I enjoy coming out here with the staff, uh, learning more about what they do, cleaning out the stalls, take, take responsibilities of the horses, um, propel them to, uh, for people with disabilities to be involved, involvement and involvement. There are many programs just like Tian Vika around the country. But Tian Vika is unique in the fact that it is the only facility of its kind here locally in Central Florida, giving students with developmental disabilities a haven for therapy. As a parent, you want to see your child flourish, and when they have special needs, I mean, just the littlest thing is a big deal. And for them to be able to do things that other normal kids do is, is a really big deal. I feel like that I'm more involved with the horse and they, f they feel the same way and I s so to me it's a chorus and graceful and how how to be a part of of them as I ride, ride them. There you go high five buddy give Haley a high five. Seeing the kids smiles on their faces and having them being able to do seeing them do things that they many people think they can't do. Uh, we have kids here who uh, many people think they'd never be able to ride a horse to do anything and we've gotten a lot of kids from never being on a horse before who have a disability to actually riding the horses by themselves. Tian Vika relies heavily on student volunteers for cleaning stalls or assisting clients and newcomer volunteers are always welcome. For ENN, I'm David Ward. Behind me is the Joseph Reynolds Dormitory, and as you've probably guessed by now, this campus is very rich in history. Florida Southern College has been a fixture in Lakeland since 1883, when it was first originated. Designed by world-renowned architect Frank Lloyd Wright, the campus is widely considered to be one of the foremost architectural sites in the world. Perhaps the centerpiece of the campus is the Ann Pfeiffer Chapel. Florida Southern College is affiliated with the United Methodist Church, but welcomes students of all faiths and cultures. Academically, Florida Southern has a wide selection of courses to choose from, many among the best in the nation. One such program is broadcasting. David Snodgrass is a professor in that department. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Communications here at Florida Southern College and have been for about 17 years now. Uh, studio cameras, Panasonic's, and uh, also, I believe, a Panasonic digital uh, mixer and a, a good quality audio board. Aside from academics, the athletic program is also very prestigious. Athletic director Lois Webb has been there for seven years. Well, I'm pleased to tell you we have 15 sports, and uh, George Jenkins would be great candidates, their student body, to uh, look at Florida Southern College as their first choice, both academically as well as athletically. But our baseball program is uh, a national championship recognized program. They've won nine national championships. One of the major sports at Florida Southern is their men's championship baseball team coached by Pete Meyer. Won the 2005 national championship in baseball and uh, conference championship as well. So we've been to six regional tournaments, five regional finals in the last six years. Florida Southern is consistently ranked among the top 10 colleges in the United States. So if you are interested in staying close to home for college, Florida Southern is the college for you.
If you never saw the girls' varsity soccer team this season, you might need to watch in slow motion. But for opposing defenders, everything happened all too fast in this year's state championship tournament. This year's team finished with 29 wins and no losses, a number one state ranking and a number one national ranking, all first in Jenkins' storied soccer history. We've gone through a lot of animosity and a lot of a lot of people doubting us from the beginning. Before we even had a team this year, there was a lot of doubts to us. And the fact that we came in here and won a state championship four to one should, should be a statement to everybody saying, you know what, we mean business. And these girls certainly did mean business. Led by Olympic qualifier Kayla Grimsley, who was named Polk County Soccer Player of the Year, the Lady Eagles scored more goals and garnered more attention than any soccer team in school history. One of the hallmarks of this year's team was the unselfish play by Grimsley and others in a nationally known program on which everyone scored. When people say, when we play teams that have one person, two people, three people, we know that we can man mark them or we know that that's all we have to watch. But with this team, it's not just one person, two people, three people, it's, it's everyone. And if they're going to man mark a whole team, then they just took themselves out of the game and, and we'll come and we'll, we'll make money. All in all, the Eagles came out on top, led by Grimsley's amazing offensive performance. For ENN, I'm David Ward. With technology increasing and security growing tighter, the George Jenkins Media Center has found the need to take their checkout system to the next level. After attending a bus tour for media specialists this summer, Ms. Smither, along with 65 other librarians in Polk County, were introduced to the fingerprint system. Once she learned how it worked, she felt that it was a necessary addition to our school's library. Mr. Thomas then approved the idea and had it installed on the 1st of July. After working with the system for several weeks, Ms. Smither has determined the best and most efficient way to ensure proper checkout of all materials. The best way when you come in to get your fingerprint is not to press too hard because then it tries to read through layers on your finger. And the other thing is to put your finger flat on there because if you put it on um, with a little bit of it up, it doesn't get your entire fingerprint and then it doesn't read. So that's what we found the best way to work with it. Not only has this new system made the job easier for media specialists, but it has also made checking out materials more convenient for both students and faculty. This is Jessica Shipley reporting for ENN. Are you looking for something fun and creative to do in Lakeland? Check out Picasso's Cup, a hip, trendy, tasteful, yet offbeat kind of place to express yourself or purely entertain yourself with art while relaxing to smooth jazz and sipping a latte or green tea. You're invited to browse around the vibrant 2,800 square foot studio to pick your art piece from the many available. You may choose from painting pottery, creating a mosaic piece, or glass fusion. We went to Ashland Rogers for the next step. You'll pick your piece out, pick a table, sit down, and then we'll give you a tour of our paint bar that we have. Um, we have lots of colors to choose from. It's really simple. You know, you'll paint your two to three coats, you know, do your designs on it, and then you'll leave it here once you're finished and we glaze and fire it for you and it takes about three to six days to get it back to you guys so it's really simple and easy fun date night anything like that so and of course an art studio wouldn't be an art studio without a sophisticated drink which brings us to tea largo the area's first contemporary tea bar conveniently attached to picasso's cup here you can have a taste of any of the main delicious drinks on their full beverage menu ranging from fruit smoothies to iced coffees so the next time you say there's nothing to do in Lakeland, stop by Picasso's Cup, located in the new Lakeside Village, seconds from Cobb Theater. Studio hours are Sunday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., and Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. So whether you're on your own or with friends, come, enjoy, and express yourself. Weightlifting, a conditioning exercise that helps improve and sculpt the physical body. While gym memberships and at-home equipment can be costly, here at Jenkins, students have an alternative. Weightlifting classes are being taught by both Coach Cobb and Coach Goodrum. Both coaches put in a lot of dedication and want to see students succeed in keeping their bodies healthy. But it's like almost imperative that these guys get something out of this, even females. Lifting weights is beneficial to men, women, athletes, and anyone willing to put in the effort. Alongside with weightlifting classes, the weight room is open two hours after school. Lindsay Ross expresses her thoughts on weightlifting. It overall just helps me in like all sports I play and keeps me in shape and, and the class itself is fun because the, 
all the students <laughs> are here and they make it fun and make it harder because they're my competition. And this is Jessica Shipley reporting for ENN. Here at the 2008 second annual George Jenkins High School Career Expo, over 50 vendors were represented, showcasing the benefits of their company to prospective students. Students browsed booths looking for jobs and free handouts set up by vendors as early as 6 in the morning. A variety of corporations were represented, from Lakeland Regional Medical Center to the military. I'm a combat medic, which is a 68 whiskey. Uh, I do the same thing an EMT does. I'm nationally certified. The Army's paid for it. It's 16 weeks. And if Jenkins students were interested in the service career route, David Bivens represented the City of Lakeland Fire Department. Basic training is a class of 520 hours. Once you begin that training, it's going to last uh, approximately four to five months. Uh, that will bring you in as a basic firefighter with the City of Lakeland. With a myriad of careers and vocations represented this year, students had a wealth of information and expert advice on hand to help with future career choices. I think the career fair is really good. Uh, there are a lot of jobs and opportunities, and you learn a lot of information. It's really cool. I'm learning a lot today. For ENN, I'm David Ward. It was here, in this small room, that the CD, Mission Cuba, was recorded. The idea of, go, of going to Cuba came from me because I, have still, I still have contact with uh, the churches in Cuba and uh, I know that they are in their need of help. They have nothing. They have, they have nothing down there. It's, it's hard for them to, to, get, to get clothes. Uh, it's, it's hard for them to, to get medicine. We were coming up with all these cockamamie ideas about how to raise funds. And I said, Ron, I said, we have a studio, we produce music, let's sell a CD of original music. And Ron came up to me and asked if I wanted to be in it because I'd been leading worship with youth group and everything and he figured that I had, you know, wanted to try out writing. So I just decided to do it. In, in, a, in a digital facility like this, you can generally produce an entire song in four to six hours depending upon how complicated it is, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Um, however, we put in probably upwards of 100 to 120 hours on this one, I would say. As far as Cuba goes, I'm really excited about that. And it kind of worked out perfectly because I've been wanting to go on a mission trip for a couple years now. And um, obviously in school we had talked about communism and how it's so hard to get into those countries. Where can you get your copy? Livingrockmusic.com and they can pre-order from there. They can also hear clips. There's like a little radio button thing. You can hear 30-second clips of all those. This is Aaron Carpenter reporting for ENN. This year, the 2007-2008 girls varsity soccer team has been blessed with a wealth of talent ranging from freshmen all the way to seniors in high school. The girls have sped their way to a 24-0-2 record, one of the best in George Jenkins soccer history. This year's team has been led by Olympic qualifying captain Kayla Grimsley. I think we're going to make it to state. I, I, I said that from day one, from the first time I saw us practice and the first game I saw us play together, I, I just had this gut feeling that we were going to get really far to the state semifinal, if not final. As of right now, we are ranked number nine in the country. So I think that in my experiences, we've this is the best team I've ever played for. And we don't make it to state that often. And, we have a good shot at making it this year. Our, our work ethic and our dedication and practices and games and everything, um, the, the sisterhood that we've created, it's been phenomenal and it's been nothing like I've witnessed before in all previous years of high school soccer. So, And like all great sports teams, all good stories must come to an end. And this girls soccer team hopes their story ends at the state finals. For ENN, I'm David Ward. Energy drinks are real popular nowadays. A lot of people are buying them, but why? A lot more teenagers are drinking energy drinks such as Monster, Full Throttle, Amp, Red Bull, Starbucks, Double Shot Espressos to help them get through their days. I think that energy drinks like Red Bull help you stay awake and if you need uh, extra boost that they are great to drink. I think energy drinks are useless because they don't really give you energy and water is better for you. That's what they think. Here's Miss Owens, a registered nurse with the health effects. The, the truth about energy drinks is we just don't know. 
Um, there are some ingredients in there that we honestly don't know very much about. Mostly what an energy drink is, is a very high dose of sugar and a very high dose of caffeine. Caffeine is basically a stimulant and a diuretic, so it's more likely to dehydrate an athlete than do much of anything to enhance his performance. The health effects of energy drinks remain uncertain, but people will continue to drink them. For ENN, I'm Kareem Nimmer.